we did a deep dive on Wisconsin because if you want an example of our democracy in danger, Look no further than that state. I mean, it is a state that's purple, but Republicans have a majority in both houses of the state legislature, and they've basically rendered Democrats powerless through radical gerrymandering. Democratic Governor Tony Evers has had to use his veto power more than 140 times. But Republicans could win a veto-proof supermajority on Tuesday, and things could get a whole lot worse. So I gathered together an amazing group of Wisconsin state lawmakers to talk about the present and the future implications of this Republican majority in their state. But I started by asking them which issues were most important to their constituents. Take a listen. People want good jobs. They want safe, quality schools. They want a secure retirement. They want a good future. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to lose my job. I want to get sick. Those are the core issues. And that's why inflation is such a critical thing for people because it attacks their economic security. One of the top issues not only about, is about economic security but also public safety and so when we talk about you know Democrats are soft on crime, we don't care about people that are being harmed, that's simply not true. This past session we actually introduced a smart justice package and one of the pieces of legislation would actually give local municipalities shared revenue increase so they can fund what they need to do whether it's in public safety for law enforcement or even things like transit that bill did it get to the floor it didn't even get a hearing mm. so what is you all strategy what is that path so we have to make sure to reelect governor tony evers and we have to prevent a republican supermajority you would think in a state that's purple that's often decided by a percentage point in statewide elections we would not have a threat of republicans getting two-thirds of the votes in the legislature but that is where we stand because of how gerrymandered our maps are right now it seems to me that the, the, the current um, state legislatures in Wisconsin who are Republicans do not care about the will of the people. If they don't care about the will of the people um, and you rally the people to attempt to hold them accountable, I am, uh, what effect will that have on them? It's important that the public is engaged in the entire process. The protests and the rallies are very important because it shows that people are coming in masses and literally making their voices heard. It's important to engage folks around the state. I think that helps out with, with in the building work and applying pressure there. Really? Okay. And do you think that um, do you think that folks around the state understand that? Understand the power that they do have in showing up? Have you seen an increase in their willingness to kind of get in the faces a little more, if you will? Since the uh, decision of overturning Roe versus Wade, we've seen a lot of folks get engaged. I actually was helping out um, doing doors in Washington County with one of my mentees, and one of the volunteers actually told me after she saw that decision, she found the Democratic office and said, can I sign up? So let's just assume everybody at this table gets reelected. <laughs> <laughs> and let's, let's assume Governor Evers gets reelected. But let's also assume that the Republicans in Wisconsin get the one seat that they need in the state Senate. Going into next year, 2023, 2024, what is the strategy? Mm -hmm. Well, we will continue to fight to protect democracy in Wisconsin. Tim Michaels, just this week. I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you, Madam Leader. What yeah. does that mean? Because what, to, what tools are in your toolbox? What does that mean? Because I think for a, a, a voter, person in Wisconsin, who is like, I see what, is, what it could potentially happen, and I'm going to go to the ballot box to make my voice heard because I'm concerned about democracy. They do what they need to do, and... What do you tell them? Like, mm, we're still at a disadvantage. How do you keep those people engaged? Well, there is a path, right? We do not necessarily have to have these legislative maps forever. But as you said, it is not going to mean that the will of the people is reflected in the Capitol until democracy is actually restored in Wisconsin. And so in many ways, we are on defense right now. We are trying to prevent Republicans from dismantling the Nonpartisan Elections Commission and taking further actions. Did that Tim Michael said he would do if he is elected governor? He also said this week that Democrats would never win in Wisconsin again if he was elected governor. Do you think the Democratic Party apparatus in this state or nationally could have done more, should have done more to, or could have done more to prevent the current situation that you all find yourselves in? I mean, it's, it was, I think it's easy to be critical when you look back at past elections and say, wow, we lost, we lost 
the election. You know, in, in 2016, it was it was awful to see uh, Donald Trump win Wisconsin for the for the. <laughs> For the first time, and but the candidate at the top of the ticket in 2016 didn't even come to Wisconsin. And, and I think that's the the gentlest way I can be <laughs> critical of, of the question that you've asked because um, because it speaks to something that I that I think you've noticed us talk about and hopefully have picked up on. You have to go and ask people for their vote. You can't yeah. take it for granted. Don't wait. Don't wait to get engaged. Don't wait to vote. And don't wait for someone to do it for you. Don't wake up with a knife with regrets. Don't wake up with regrets. I'm a, I'm a, we're going to raise a glass. We're going to toast. <laughs> we are going to toast to democracy. Okay, democracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, cheers, cheers. <laughs> Thank you all very, very much. I'm still toasting to democracy.